Hi guys, Nada here and today I'm gonna review yet another AMD graphics card. So here I have Gigabyte Aorus Radeon RX 5700 XT. So the chip you guys actually still do like. Now this is Gigabyte's premium three slot card that has some extra features. So it has extra connections, it has two BIOS options and it also comes with an extra year of warranty. Now, as you remember, this chip came out in July, but this card uh, came out only recently. So I'm quite curious to see, are there any improvements made in this period of time? Because Gigabyte does promise that this is the best card you can get. Now, uh, let's get down to business and compare it to some of the other 5700 XT cards I've reviewed so far. So the Asus ROG, MSI Gaming X, uh, uh, ASRock Tai Chi, as well as the cheaper uh, card from Gigabyte, the Gaming OC. Now, before you start commenting how I forgot about the Sapphire and the Power Color card, I did not forget. I simply do not own those. So let's talk about the clock speed, the thermals, noise, and all those fun graphs you guys love, uh, and see where does this card stand. This video is brought to you by the Riotoro Morpheus, a modular dual chamber case that features mesh steel panels on every single side, so you can easily keep any high-end rig nice and cool. It also comes with two fast type C ports, extensive RGB controls, and did I mention you can build it in two different sizes? Check it out using the links in the description below. The the design of this Aorus card is actually quite new. The Aorus versions of the high-end GeForce RTX cards look actually really extreme with a lot going on and even RGB in the fans themselves, but also didn't really perform amazingly well. The new design, however, focuses more on performance and less on flashy plastic parts, which is actually a good thing. It is not overly big, it is 29 centimeters long and barely over 12 centimeters tall, so it should fit in most cases. It is thick though, with a three slot heatsink that covers the chip, the memory, and the VRM MOSFETs. I'd say it looks like they took their tried and tested gaming OC design and just put it on steroids. They've also added a bit more RGB to this, with some lines in the actual shroud, but they didn't really go over the top. There is a metal backplate as well, which keeps things nice and clean. I have to say, I personally love the new design of the backplate much more than any of the other Aorus cards before. You'll need uh, two 8-pin power connections to power it, and there is a small BIOS switch to swap between uh, an OC BIOS and a quiet one. And I will be testing both. Another feature that stands out is the number of connections on the back. Now, typically you would get three DisplayPort uh, 1.4 connections and one HDMI 2.0B port. And here they've added two extra HDMI 1.4B ports. So you have three total. Now let's talk performance. Uh, for those of you that haven't seen any videos uh, so far, I have to say that the RX 5700 XT GPUs are doing really well. The RX 5700 XT offers more performance than you need for 1080p gaming and an overall excellent Quad HD experience. It is faster than the RTX 2060 Super, but just behind an RTX 2070 Super. Now, as I mentioned in my GPU buy guide video, I generally think that the RX 5700 XT is a strong recommendation if you can afford one, but don't want to spend more on an RTX 2070 Super. I will link both my RX 5700 XT review and my buy guide uh, in the description down below if you want to go and check those out. Okay, let's move on to why you guys are actually watching this video and that is the performance of the Aorus card and how it actually compares to the other cards I've tested so far. While clock speeds will vary from sample to sample, it is great to see that our Aorus set the highest factory OC out of the box in OC BIOS. 2046 MHz is a lot higher than most others and it does put this card a couple of percent ahead in terms of performance. Now even in the quiet BIOS the overclock is still very competitive, but in reaching those speeds our sample also drew significantly more power than the other cards in OC mode and the power consumption in quiet mode was on par with the competition. The temperature stayed nicely in line with the competition, with the OC mode being among the coolest actually, and the quiet mode in the same ballpark as the ROG and Astro card in their respective quiet modes. Now, as you would expect, the noise levels in OC mode do get a little bit higher than the ROG card and the MSI Gaming X. Still, considering the extra power draw on the Aorus card, I expected it to look worse, so the cooling solution definitely does a decent job. 
39.7 decibels at 50 centimeters distance is definitely audible. So if you want an ultra silent system, this won't be your first choice. Gigabyte's own Gaming OC card shows that with slightly lower clocks, you can reach a noticeably lower noise level, even with a smaller and cheaper cooling solution. In quiet mode, when temperatures go higher, the noise levels actually drop to be one of the lowest in the graph, with the ROG card showing a bit better overall efficiency with slightly lower temps and noise. But honestly, one decibel difference is pretty tough to actually notice. Of course, what it ultimately comes down to is how much will it cost in your region. In the US, it'll cost around 449 US dollars, putting it to the same league as the ROG Strix card, and about 20 to 30 dollars more than the Gaming OC and MSI Gaming X. In the Netherlands, however, it will cost you around 479 euros, also around 30 euros over the Gaming OC and Gaming X. All right, to wrap it up, if you look at pure gaming performance, it is really hard to recommend any card that is more expensive than the Gigabyte Gaming OC or the MSI Gaming X cards. Now, it is great that this card has a bit higher clock speed, but you will never notice that in gaming. But this card does have some other features that are worth the extra price, and the most important one there is the warranty. So you get an extra year of warranty if you register this card online, and that is something I personally value very much, especially when you're spending so much money on a graphics card to begin with. Now, on top of that, you also get uh, some extra features like a dual BIOS and extra connections, and not to forget uh, some extra RGB that the other cards don't have. So if you are looking to buy an RX 5700 XT card, this card is definitely something you should look into. Now that's it for today. Thank you so much for watching. Let me know in the comments down below what do you think about this review and about this graphics card. Don't forget to subscribe, give me a thumbs up and see you in the next one. Bye.